keep it like that. Then. So ladies and gentlemen, while we're trying to work, Jax has decided to plonk himself in our sacks of sawdust because he thinks there's a, there's a mouse in there or something. We collected all this, Jax. Thank you. For those wondering, these sacks, Dad, are the sawdust from the ash tree cut milling, weren't they? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Use it for all around the outside, yeah. Well, Jax is now making a mess of it there, but this, we didn't buy these sacks in. These are just our bags. And every time it gets wet as we're walking up and down the sides, we can just use some of the old milled ash tree sawdust. Nothing goes to waste. Just making some notches at the moment, which is taking longer than we thought because we didn't bring any a Jigsaw. powered jigsaw or yeah, the jackery or anything like that, we are on hand tools today. Yeah, well, we, for sawing wise, for cutting. So I've had to do a bit of bushcraft and improvise and just use the old bushcraft knife and a stick and make a load of notches. A bit more time consuming, but it works. What are you doing there, Dad? I'm just turning it around because somebody, look, all, a lot of modern wood, when you go to the DIY stores, you've got to go and see where the twists and all the rubbish bits are, which bits have been busted out by the forklift truck driver. So you want as best as you can get. But somebody also told us about the crown of the wood when you do a roof should go on the top. And we find that when you do look down it, because we've already put two up there <laughs> with the wrong way round, <laughs> is a very slight bow and a dish. So they're saying, you, you probably won't see it with the camera. It sort of dips down like this on this curve, and that side rises a little bit. It's very, very fractional. But we did see on somebody's uh, site they did say put the roof with a crown upwards. So that's what we're trying to do. Oh god, it won't fall off. Yeah.
I'll go back, bang it back to you. Uh, back to me. Back to me. So welcome to part three. We're making really good progress in this episode, so there's gonna be plenty coming up. We've, well, Dad, you've been up on the roof, haven't you? Yeah, up on the roof, yeah, up there in the gods, as they say, yeah. uh, putting the felt down. Now we went with felt because cost-effective, obviously it's not the most uh, durable, let's say, uh, material, although that one says about 15, 15 years. years. Yeah. So um, look, it is what it is. But 86. <laughs> we, a lot of people said, oh, why don't you do some uh, kind of shingles, cedar shingles or shakes. I say cedar, ash it would be. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, is that the pitch or the angle of the roof is so flat that uh, they would water would just get through them. Uh, the tiles like that. I think you need a minimum, I want to say 12 degrees. Yeah, you've got to have a certain degree. I want to say, water I, to run I, off. I think it's minimum 12 degrees with shingles. You guys would probably know more than us. But yeah, we weren't going to go with shingles on this. Um, it made sense to just go with the OSB. That's 11 mil, I want to say OSB. Again, we could have gone more hardcore and gone 13, but 11 was fine. We, don't want, loads, up there, trust we me. don't want loads of weight up there. So 11 mil OSB board felt on top keeping it really simple remember we're not living in this it's not a uh, a long-term type thing yeah. it's just for storage and for being Watch able to look out that way at nature storage. and get some good photographs and videos for you guys gonna, so we use clout now so just tell them as well as the clout now is just to pin it down you're going to put a fascia board up there yeah place. so we've still we'll got also seal it we're going to mastic seal yeah. the edge just as an absolute backup now you don't need to because mm. we've overlapped you know the felt like this and now through both of the clout nails but we just said, for the sake of a tube of mastic, we'll, yeah. we'll put yeah, we're put some, roof sealant across we'll, it. We'll definitely put some sealant on it. Um, I guess the good thing about this felt is uh, you can replace it really easily. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so it's easy shed. to replace. It's so it's one of those things where, the, to be honest, the whole shelter can just be picked up and moved. It's really, it's really quite easy to, to adjust and things like that. So once the roof is finished, we're then on to the most exciting part of the whole thing for me, which is going to be the cladding which is all those ash boards that Ryan helped mill up for about two days from the giant ash tree. That's when you're gonna see that big ash tree at the beginning of this series, this whole series I started, you can see that lovely majestic ash tree. That's when you're gonna see the planks coming onto the shelter itself. And I really, really can't wait for that. But it'll be different shapes, isn't it? That's oh, big... it's all different patterns. It's yeah. all live edge. It's just total character. And it's so in keeping with the woodland itself it is, because yeah. it came from the woods itself. It came itself. from the woodland and it's dead. It would have just rotted there. Exactly. So we're looking forward to that, but we're gonna have a bit of a lunch break and uh, then it's time. I've already started collecting some of the cladding and bringing it over. But um, yeah, after that, it's, it's time for the real serious stuff, which I know you guys have really been looking forward to. Lunch stop, do you think? Uh, 100%, yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and a cup roof, of tea. Roof. <laughs> Jax is with us as well. Yeah, we've but... got the doggy with us as well. This, yeah. is a, this is a killer dog guarding everything down yeah, look, here. Yeah, yeah. He's absolutely ready to rock and roll, as you can see. Dad's totally babied him. Look, put his coat it's down baby. for him. Look at the state of him. 
Oh, he's only a baby. <laughs> Keep him warm. I tell you, if any other dog comes, he's out there like a cruise missile, isn't he? Well, Pow! well, we saw some deer, didn't we? How fast did Jacks go? Well, we lost him. We lost him. I chased <laughs> him. He was gone. He so was absolutely gone. Got to watch him, you. Oi, got to watch him, haven't we? <laughs> right, lunchtime, eh? So those of you who've been following the Woodland Life series from pretty much episode one will recognise this beast behind me. This is the giant ash tree, which obviously I milled up. I didn't personally do it, my friend Ryan did. And we chopped up various pieces for firewood, uh, all sorts of things. We've got planks out of it, we've got posts out of it. Um, I always, part of my kind of management plans, aims, objectives and things like that is to try and reuse as much of the wood that I have in this woodland for various craft projects and you know giving back to nature whether it be leaving it to rot on the floor for biodiversity reasons or uh, turning it into usable woodland craft items um, or planks for example to try and make something and, and you know give life back to what was previously going to be just sat on the forest floor so it's a bit of a mixture this part behind me the main root system that's all going to be left to nature to biodegrade and help with the decomposers and everything like that um, and just enrich the, the fungi and, and the insects and things like that you know it's gonna it's gonna give so much more back um, but what I wanted to show you was the planks because they are now ready to go up onto the shelter also I thought I'd do a quick sweep of the area that's where we're storing the planks under the tarp but if you look how different it looks at the moment with these bluebells starting to come up it's so different from when we had started this ash tree project look at all this so many all of that is just a blanket of bluebells and then we have some the hardy ones even coming up through all the thick sawdust now we used this sawdust uh, when it was muddy around that shelter and i'll continue to bag this sawdust there's so much of it and once it's really really dry i'll just bag it and store it and we can do all sorts with it and just use it for the muddy past in the winter and things like that but it's looking beautiful we just need leaves on the trees we've got the buds we've got small leaves coming through and the birds are making their, their spring song. There goes the piece. <laughs> gonna get through these boards, aren't we, Dad? Yeah. We are gonna get through these. But how dry are they? And also, Ryan was really impressed with this, Dad. They've they've barely cupped at all. In terms of when they've dried, they, there's absolutely barely any bowing in them at all, which Ryan said he was quite impressed with. So I did something right, maybe putting the PVA on the ends, because that's all sealed with PVA glue. Yeah, Maybe that really helped. Do you reckon that helped? And yeah, also put, say, yeah. also putting them under the tarp. Possibly the time of year that we did it all, winter. Yeah. You know, so there's no, the there's right no time. sunlight that's going to keep drying it out and burning it. What's he? What are you doing? He's mousing. He's trying to get something, isn't he? Beautiful, lovely grain in these ash boards. They're going to look great on the shelter. And look at that really nice live edge, all along here. And that's going to just give it so much character. And all of these came from that tree over there. Two. That, that one's going to finish them. I don't know what you want to take. Does it matter now? Well, that's not. Because uh, they're short, I think. No, they, that little. That this one, one yeah, like finish on the left. That's a finish off job, isn't it? Yeah. That's the top, yeah? Yeah. The I top think so, plank. Yeah. I think so. To finish that, then we start the back. Yeah. I'll take that one. That's 
video. Man in the middle. Right, keep coming in the, in the U bit, the low bit, further up there. That's it. Got it? Right. Yeah. You need to come down yeah, more. You come to me a bit. Lower your end, really. Keep going, this gap. Keep going, keep going, keep going. There. Anyway. I've got to cut mine anyway. I've got to cut mine on. It's only a thin one. My way up there. It was right up under, then came down a bit. Then down a bit. Yeah, about there. Dad, what do you think? All good? All good? All still standing, as it were? Which is good for us. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I love the ash. That's For me, that was the biggest part, I'm sure, for you guys watching at home. That was one of the biggest things, because that's that's the ash tree that was yeah. down in the woods over there. It's being brought back to life in a different way. It's not wasted at all. And it looks amazing. And this, like I said, the smell of ash when it's cut is just so nice and sweet. So we've got a little, uh, you might see a little window area there. That's gonna be like 
well, a foal that one, isn't it? It's going to be yeah. like a, um, well, like a bird, hide, like a bird yeah. hide type nature one where you can fold it out. And then that way I've got, hopefully getting a new camera lens soon. And I can use that to zoom in because I've mm. found with the trail cams, I've found where the deer are moving now. So I've got an idle angle to be able to slot the camera out to try and get footage of the deer. And also there's a badger. You might see on the overlay of the, what, I, what I'm talking now, there's actually a badger here, there's deer and there's a small hare and obviously the great gray squirrel as well. Um, it might be, something else might be poking out of the... There'd be a lot more, <laughs> be a lot, when you get late evening, early morning at dawn, you know, anything like that, low light levels, that's when they're gonna come out. Yeah. Hardly like to come out without well, hammering and banging. No, but that's the thing, This is, it's noisy at first, obviously doing all this, but when it's up, it's so peaceful. And I'm really looking forward now to coming here when it's nice and quiet and just sitting there for a Chill bit out, and being yeah. able to, yeah. you know, but the, the most important thing, and I think you'll agree, Dad, is is lifting. We, no, is we finally have somewhere to store all the tools. We don't have to bring it in all the yeah, time. Yeah, we don't have to wheelbarrow them half a mile <laughs> up a hill, up a hill. Where we where we sort of park the car, we've moved all the tools in by wheelbarrow. Um, and even with the wheelbarrow and, and other timber, we've we're now we now can store the wood in here. Yeah. We can store some tools in here, so we don't have to keep bringing them all back and forward all the time. So yeah. from our perspective, that's the aim of what this is really. Just so a simple. Next phase is door. Door, window, window, steps. Oh, the back. We haven't, finished, an we haven't finished the back as well, the, the cladding on the back. Yeah. So we've got to still do that. But other than that, we're really yeah. pleased. So great shape, great shape. All that wood, it's totally different type. It's not, it's just, it's not straight shiplap type of cladding, is it? Yeah. You know, it's every shape is different. It's all, it's all character yeah. in each in each shape. It's and it's over, what, at least 100 years old? Well, actually, tree. people said with the ash tree, over 100, did okay. you count the rings? And I went and counted the rings earlier today. Yeah. And I think it was 100 and... Two, well, there you go. It's a hundred-year-old so, tree, 100, still yeah. not wasted. Amazing! I'm really, really pleased. This has been such an incredible project to be able to do. Great to be doing it with you, Dad, as well. Um, yeah. And we've got more to do, obviously, to it. So stay tuned. We really appreciate you following this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to Dad's channel, TA Fishing. Whenever I go fishing, I Whenever, don't know. I'm here he's all been the time. up here loads, so it's my turn to come onto your channel. I think yeah. next, Dad, and do some fishing. Um, and also, if you'd like to follow it, this Woodland Series playlist, I'll put a link up here or go in the description below and look for it, or just type in TA Outdoors Woodland Life on YouTube. There's more bushcraft stuff coming as well down the line, guys. I know there's yeah. people who want to see the survival tips and things like that. There's more of that coming. I feel I feel that this should be christened by going and catching a nice big fat trout, cooking a whole trout down here. Yeah, that would be good, actually. That yeah, would be something good, yeah. yeah. And making leather from the trout skin. And you've got some salmon skin from Ireland. Yeah, we do. I bought over some proper salmon, big, Big salmon. I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it, and we'll catch you in the next episode.